Hey there, this is Phil with PRR Computers, and today we're going to discuss how to set up multi-factor authentication using the Microsoft Authenticator and on an iPhone. Okay, so multi-factor authentication is an additional layer of security that Microsoft has rolled out on their on, on all Microsoft accounts. Uh, we're thinking specifically of like, you know, Microsoft emails, maybe your business email. Um, and it's, it's sometimes a little bit of a headache to get it set up. But the thing is, is it's kind of the best first line of defense, security-wise, that we have for these accounts. And that is so much the case that Microsoft has made it mandatory and they've been rolling it out, and most organizations have this already rolled out, and some are still, at the time of making this video, are still kind of waiting in line for that. But it's coming, and it's actually a good thing, even though if you don't do a lot of multi-factor authentication stuff yet, you know, it may seem like an unnecessary inconvenience. But once you get it set up properly, it's really easy to use. So we're going to go through the process of setting it up properly. Okay, so what you're going to need for us to do this is you're going to need, first of all, you need your Microsoft work, you know, your, your Microsoft email and password. Usually that's your work email. You need that email and password to be able to get this done. Uh, if you don't have it, you might have the ability to reset your own password, or you may have to contact your IT person. But make sure that you've got a working email and password. Um, and if we, if we get to the point where you log in and you don't have that, then pause the video, go get that straightened out, and come back. Okay, the second thing that you must have with you is your mobile phone. In this case, we're covering specifically setting this up on an iPhone. And then you need to have a computer handy. It could be a laptop or a desktop, it doesn't really matter, but some kind of a computer. Preferably a Windows computer, but actually that doesn't matter. It just needs to be a device separate from your iPhone that you can open up a web browser in. Okay, so for some of you, this is your starting point that you would have seen. You go to try and log in to your account, most likely on the web, and you're met with this screen that shows your email and says more information required and the only option you're given is a next button. Now if you're early in the rollout process, there might be a way to there might be a button that you would see that says, you know, skip this for however many days. But eventually, if you don't take care of this, you're going to end up at this point where they're going to force it on you. Okay? So if this is your starting point, I would say go ahead and close down your web browser and start over again, and then you'll be able to follow along completely with what we're going to cover here. And we're actually going to get started on your phone. So on your iPhone, you are wanna, you're going to want to go into the App Store, and that's this icon right here. So when you open up the App Store, you're going to want to Click down here for search. It's usually in the bottom right corner. Your screen may vary a little bit. This was on an older iPhone, but the principle is the same. You go to search, and you want to search for Microsoft Authenticator in the App Store on your phone. Now, you're going to get other results in the search. In fact, usually for me, the first result is not the one we want. It's some other thing that someone has promoted a link to or whatever. You want to make sure that the one that you're getting is actually named Microsoft Authenticator. Okay? And basically, you should have an option there to download the app. So once you've downloaded it, or maybe it's on your phone and you didn't realize it, it's going to show up with a, a link here to open it. That only shows up if it's actually if the app is already on your phone. Now, the other way to launch it would be if you have the authenticator, then somewhere on your phone on one of the screens is going to be an icon that just says authenticator and it has this type of icon. They change the icon from time to time. So uh, just make sure that it is actually the Microsoft authenticator. 
and you're just going to tap on that to open it. Now, the very first time that you launch the Authenticator, you should see something like this. It's kind of a basic... Um, you know how, like, when you visit a website, sometimes there'll be a little pop-up that says, hey, we use cookies, please approve that, or whatever. This is the equivalent of that. It's It only happens on the very first launch. If you get this initial pop-up, just click Agree. And then you're going to be met with this screen. And this screen, I think is one of the sources of confusion for a lot of people. Because right here, it's asking for to sign in with Microsoft. Uh, I'm here to tell you that you don't have to do that, and we're actually not going to do that in our test here. We're going to skip this. There's a button up here that most people miss up in the top right corner that just says Skip. So when you do that, then you're going to see a screen just like this. And this is where we really want to be to get started setting this up, is add an account. So once you're at this point and you've got this screen showing in the Microsoft Authenticator on your phone, now it's time to open up on your computer. And keep your phone handy, but over on the computer, whatever computer you're using, you're going to want to go to www.office.com. And then you're just going to click on the sign in button right here, the blue, blue button. Okay, so this is where that work email and password that we talked about at the beginning, this is where you use that for the first time. So you go ahead and type in your work email and click next. And then you type in your work email's password and click sign in. And then we're going to be back to this uh, step asking you to, you know, more information is required. This is the place where a lot of people get stuck and they're not sure what to do. And now we're going to go forward from this point. So at this point, we've already signed into the email, but now it wants additional info. And that's where what we're doing on the phone is going to come in handy. So we're going to click Next. Now it says, start by getting the app. On your phone, install the Microsoft Authenticator app. There's a download link, which is not very helpful because this is not on your phone, right? After you install it, choose Next. Okay, well, we already, in our first steps here, installed the Microsoft Authenticator app. So we're actually already done with this step. So we can immediately click the Next button on that screen on your computer. Now it says, uh, set up your account. So we are going to, just for the sake of keeping this moving along, we're going to go ahead and click Next on the computer now, and then we're going to do several steps over on the phone, okay? So if we click Next on the computer, this is this, as far as we can proceed on the computer, but keep this page open. And now we're going to switch back over to the phone, and we're going to click on we're going to tap on Add Account. Now, when you do that, most of the time you get prompted with this here. Do you have a backup? Let me explain what this means. If you had used the Microsoft Authenticator and had set up an account and all that stuff on another phone, then there's a way to back up that information and then restore it to your, your new phone. Okay? That's beyond the scope of this tutorial. This is a first-time setup tutorial. So we don't, we're not going to be concerned with that at all. If you do have a backup or used Authenticator in the past, best to get with your IT person or find a video that covers that specific process. So for our purposes, we do not have a backup. We're just going to click Continue. Okay, now it's asking what kind of account you are adding. Now, for the purposes of this tutorial, we're focused on work email. So we're going to choose work or school account. So you tap on that. And now it's prompting you, add work or school account. You've got two options here, sign in or scan QR code. Now, you could try to do the sign in process, but I'm saying don't do that. Because guess which QR code it's referring to when it says scan QR code? That's right. It's the one right over here that we've already got open and waiting on our computer screen. So on the phone, we're going to tap Scan QR Code. 
Now, in order to scan the QR code, the Authenticator app needs access to the camera on the phone to do that. So you do want to click OK when it asks you if it can access the camera. Now, once you do, you're going to see a screen like this. And this, this is basically, this is the view from the camera in your phone, and you see this little square that's marked out here? You want to hold that, hold the phone up to the computer screen until this QR code on the computer screen lines up inside that square. You actually don't have to tap anything to make it happen. You just have to line it up right, and it will detect and read that code. And most of the time, as soon as it has detected the code and scanned, there's going to be another pop-up here that says, Authenticator would like to send you notifications. And you do want to allow this. It's going to make your life so much easier, as we'll show you here just a little bit down the video. So I would say, do go ahead and click on Allow for, for notifications. You'll see why here in a moment. Okay, then usually there'll be a little bit of a spinning circle here as it's processing not only what it has scanned here, but also uh, processing you allowing notifications and that kind of thing. So it will spin for a little bit on the phone, and then you should be taken to a screen like this. Now mine's blurred out, but yours will show usually the name of your company or organization, and then show your email there. And now you have added an account into Authenticator. You can actually tap on this, and it will open up a fuller view of that. It will show your company name and your email address and some of the stuff related to settings. We don't need any of this stuff for what we're doing today. It's just helpful to be able to see that. You know for sure, okay, it has been added properly. So back over on the computer, we're going to click Next on this QR code page. Okay, now you're going to see this on the computer. Hey, let's try it out. And it's going to say, approve the notification we're sending to your app by entering the number shown below. Okay, it's not worded terribly helpful there, but here's what that means. It is now going to push a notification to your phone because we did enable notifications. You remember that? So it's going to push a notification to your phone, and it's going to show up on the screen and look something like this. Are you trying to sign in? And you see how it says, enter the number shown to sign in? This is the number it's talking about. Now, in my case, it's 25. Yours very likely will not be the number 25, but it will be a number shown here. And you just want to enter that number on your phone, and then... I can't remember if you actually have to tap yes. If just entering the number doesn't advance it forward, then enter the number and tap yes. Now, once you've done that, the computer screen will automatically update and say Microsoft Authenticator notification approved. And really, that's that. Everything is set. Now, if, if you click next here, it should then take you through to sign in uh, to your account, to your email, or whatever it is that you were trying to access. Or if you've got, hmm, I don't know, if you've been having trouble adding this account to Outlook or to a phone or anything like that, you're now going to be able to complete that process successfully. So here's what that's going to look like, is if you sign in to your email on a device, be it on the web or in Microsoft Outlook, or adding the, the email as an account on your phone. If Microsoft determines that for security purposes, it wants to verify your identity with this process, then what's going to happen when you try to sign in is you're ultimately going to get to this kind of a prompt. And it's going to say approve sign in request, and it's going to show a number. This is exactly what we just did um, as part of the setup, but this is what it looks like on a normal basis. It's just slightly, it's formatted slightly differently. Now, the cool thing is, is if you did follow the advice and have notifications turned on on your phone, then even if you don't have the Authenticator app open on your phone, a notification is going to come in. These are very similar. You, you'll get notifications sometimes if you missed a phone call, 
if you have a new voicemail. Um, you know, different apps have different permissions that you set up for notifications. Well, we gave that permission to the Authenticator app. So without having to go find the app and open it up and do any of that, all you have to do is open up this notification when it comes in. So it's good to have the phone handy whenever you're going to sign into your email, just in case it asks for this, boom, it's going to be right there on the home screen. And when you do open that notification, it's going to open up the Authenticator app and bring you to this screen, just like the one we saw during sign up. And so all you do, it says enter the number, you enter this number, yours will not be 92 most likely, it will be something else. You enter whatever number is on your screen in the phone. And then if you need to, tap yes to continue. And that's that. You're signed in. So that is the process. That is setting up the Microsoft Authenticator on an iPhone to use with your Microsoft 365. Now, if at any point you go through this and something doesn't go right or you get stuck or you realize you, you took a wrong turn, you can always just go back, remove the Authenticator app, re-download it from the App Store, and start all over again with, with the steps at the beginning of this video. This will work, uh, but the steps have to be followed in this particular way. And once it's set up, I find that it's, it's generally pretty rare for most people that you're ever even asked for the Authenticator number. If you travel a lot, you know, if you connect to your account from a lot of different locations, then maybe you'll see it more often than someone who mostly works from one office or from home or from just a couple places like that. But the hard part of MFA is this setup. Once it's set up, it's fairly straightforward and easy to work with. You get used to it. So if you have any comments, uh, if you have a better way you want to suggest to do this, or if anything's changed since I made this video, uh, or if you just generally have ideas, leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. This is Phil with PRR Computers and uh, signing off. Have a great rest of your day or afternoon or evening.